you will learn about Carpenter for AKS. Carpenter will allow you to provision VMs inside your AKS cluster with lots of flexibility. Lots of flexibility when compared with the default cluster autoscaler. Carpenter is an open source project invented by AWS Amazon Web Services for its AKS clusters and then AWS donated this project to CNCF Cloud Native Computing Foundation. With that move, the Carpenter project then would be used by other cloud providers, including Microsoft Azure. So Microsoft Azure have adopted that project and have developed an AKS version for Carpenter that is available within this GitHub repository as an open source project. So you can enable it within your AKS cluster and use it and use the same Carpenter API. So here we are talking about Carpenter while we have the Kubernetes cluster autoscaler. That is the autoscaler that will run, is running on lots, lots of Kubernetes clusters because it's installed already by default within the open source version of Kubernetes. It runs as a deployment in your cluster. Cluster autoscaler have been there for years with running inside Kubernetes clusters. So it's production proven product. The cluster autoscaler will rely on node pools to create multi additional VMs. And in Azure, that node pool will be an Azure VMSS virtual machine scale set. However, one issue with VMSS is that it's using one single SKU of a virtual machine. So if I wanna create multiple SKU of VMs, then I will need to provision another virtual machine scale set or another node pool that uses other SKU like the DSQ, the F for CPU optimized or the E for memory optimized. And creating multiple node pools more than three, it means that you would have lots of management overhead because we need to worry about auto-scaling those node pools and also updating and upgrading those node pools whenever they are, there are a new OS version or a new image version or a new Kubernetes version. So Carpenter is here to try to replace the default cluster autoscaler in Kubernetes for the non-system node pools. It means for the user node pools typically. So with Carpenter, you would have, or you would be able to improve the application availability because Carpenter can respond quickly and automatically to changes in application load. With Carpenter, you can lower the compute costs because Carpenter will remove the underutilized nodes and it will replace the expensive nodes with cheaper alternatives. Carpenter actually can decide which node to remove and which node to add to the cluster. And it can decide for each node what is the SKU, what is the size of that new node. So it can detect that there are some underutilized VMs and then it will take the workloads out of these VMs, delete those VMs and then reschedule those workloads into more efficient compute resources. So Carpenter is supported today in AKS as an extension. To enable it, you just enable or use the flag node provisioning mode equal auto. With that, you would have Carpenter running inside your uh, AKS cluster. So Carpenter typically will go to look and watch for the pending pods or the unschedulable pods. And then it will go to this uh, to make some sort of an assessment to the existing VMs that are hosting those uh, pods. And then it will try to optimize those VMs or to, to optimize the capacity for these VMs. So it can decide to remove those existing VMs and reschedule the pods on the new optimized uh, capacity VMs, making sure that the new VMs w are cheaper and that my workloads will run better with better performance inside those new VMs. So it's up to the user to decide and to create a new node pool. It's here node pool in terms of Carpenter node pool. So you create a Kubernetes object of type node pool where you specify your constraints and your requirements. So you'd say here, for example, I want to create a new node pool for the burstable VMs where you specify the type of architecture. So like here we are using AMD64, for example, and then you can specify the OS, let's say Linux, for example. And then the capacity type, whether that is a spot VM or a regular Azure virtual machine, then you can also specify SQ family. Here I'm putting the B VMs, which are the burstable VMs. And you can also add the DVM for the general purpose, F for the 
CPU optimized, E for memory optimized, and V for the VMs with that comes with a GPU enabled. And you can also add other requirements like the availability zone that should be used with these VMs. So you can put one or multiple AZs. When you deploy this node pool into your Kubernetes cluster, you would see that once VMs are created as part of this node pool, those VMs actually will not be part of VMSS, a virtual machine scale set, as the example that we would have typically for the system node pool. However, those VMs will be independent VMs. So for each virtual machine, it would have its own Azure disk for the OS disk, and also it would have its own network interface. And those VMs are not even part of VMSS Flex, which is virtual machine a scale set with a flex mode that will also create some sort of independent VMs, but they will still attach it to a VMSS flex object. Here it's not the case. Those are completely independent Azure virtual machines. At least until today, you cannot see those VMs within the Azure uh, dashboard. So we can see only the node pool that is using the uh, VMSS or that is using the cluster autoscaler. However, if I run kube control get nodes, then here I would see the new nodes created by Carpenter. Follow me in the next video to see how Carpenter works inside an AKS cluster. You will learn in this demonstration how to use Carpenter inside an AKS cluster. I've created a lab environment where you can find the source code and the scripts within this GitHub repository that explains all the steps that we'll go through in this demonstration. Switching back to my VS code where I have already cloned this GitHub repository, I will find the commands.sh file that contains all the commands that we'll go through today. So to experiment with Carpenter within an AKS cluster, first we need to create a new AKS cluster. So I create a new resource group, give it a name, a location West Europe, for example, and then I go to create my AKS cluster through the command az AKS create, then provide the flag here to enable node provisioning mode. And this is the flag that will go to enable Carpenter within my AKS cluster. Note that here I'm using the Cilium mode for the networking uh, data plane. At the day of recording, this was a requirement, but this requirement might be removed in the future. Then next, I'll go to create to connect to my AKS cluster using the command az AKS get credential, and then I get the nodes. And from this command here, I can see that here I have three nodes running my system node pool. So now that uh, Carpenter is installed inside our AKS cluster, let's check for the pods that will be created by or as part of uh, Carpenter. And actually, if you take a look here, we don't see any specific pod for Carpenter. Actually, Carpenter is installed only within the control plane, not in the node pool. However, Carpenter will come with some default CRDs. So if I try here to get the node pool, which is uh, an object defined by Carpenter, it's not a native Kubernetes object here, I would see that I have actually two node pools, one called default node pool, and second one is called system search. Let's go to describe this node pool, and let's maximize this a little bit. So from here, we can see that name of that node pool, some annotations use it, and then we can see here for inside the spec section, the disruption, the consolidation policy, which is saying here underutilize it, expire after never, and then the rest of the spec here that is stating the architecture, which should be using AMD64, and then the OS, which should be using Linux, and then the capacity type, which is should be using here on demand, which is regular VMs, not spot VMs, and then the SQ family for the D family for the general purpose VMs. So this is the default configuration of the default node pool that exists by default when we enable Carpenter. Let's now check another CRD that is enabled by Carpenter, which is called AKS node class. You can find again, we have two node classes. Let's check the first one. And note within the spec section, the most important part is here. So the node class actually will specify the Ubuntu version. In this case, it's 2204. And then it will specify also the OS disk size, which is 128 in this case. So this is an existing node pool, which is the default node pool enabled by Carpenter. I have put here a file for that uh, definition of that default node pool. And 
from that default node pool, actually we can take it and re and modify it to our needs. So instead of doing that, I have actually created a new file called notepoolburstable.yaml. And here I have created a new node pool called burstable that will go to use the general, uh, not the general purpose VMs, but will use the burstable VMs in Azure. So how to configure it here? I define the disruption, I define the limits. It means that as part of this node pool should not create VMs that consume more than 16 CPU and more than 32 gigabytes of memory. And the weight is gonna define the priority of this node pool. The more the priority is, or the more this number is, the more the priority of this node pool definition. And then within the template spec, we define here the node class reference, which is here referencing the default one, the default node class would have this simple definition. So for today, it will just define the image family to be using Ubuntu 22.04. In the future, here you can specify either Azure Linux or Windows VMs. After that section, we define the requirements. And here where things become interesting. So in the requirements, we define the architecture. So I want to use VMs that use the AMD64, not ARM64, for example. And then for the OS, I want to use Linux. For the capacity type, I want to use either spot or on demand. And then for the SKU family, I want to use the VMs that are using the burstable or the B series VMs in Azure. And then I can specify the SKU CPU. So within the B series, we have multiple SKU, either the SKU that uses two CPU, four, eight, and so on. Here, I want to limit only to two, four, and eight CPU. I don't want to use uh, B VMs with 16 or more CPU. And then next, for we have the SKU version. SKU version defines the version of the SKU. So for each VM in Azure, you have the version V1, V2, V3, V4, until V5 today actually we have v6 coming and with this constraint you define the lowest number of for your uh, v series and next here we define the availability zone so that new vm that will be created will live inside one of these three availability zones so let's go to deploy this node pool so i'll go to run kube control apply that yaml file that defines the node pool and then i'll get the node pools and i should see here i have a new node pool called burstable that is using the default node class then next to use this default or this burstable node pool i will go to simulate that i have here a new workload that is an nginx deployment that will run 1000 replica so let's go to run that and here tells me that nginx deployment was created so next i can go to check for that deployment if it's really started deploying so within a few seconds we should see new pods started running and this will continue creating those pods to reach the 1000 pods meanwhile let's try to watch for the new vms that should be created by carpenter so if i run here cube control get nodes dash w to say watch for the new vms here we should see we have now a new vms that was provisioned a few seconds ago because i have new pods that needs to be rescheduled on additional compute we can see two new vms let's give it a few seconds and then later we can see that we have here a third VM that will be provisioned. And while that's running, I can go back to the Azure portal from here. And then within the MC resource group or the node resource group, I can go here to view that I have already my existing AKS resources, including the VMSS for the system node pool. But here, if I go to refresh these resources, I would see that now I have additional resources, which are my independent VMs. So for each VM here, I have the VM, I have the disk, and I have the network interface for that virtual machine. And those are independent VMs. If you take a look at one of these VMs, let's take this one, for example. Then yes, we can see that it's actually a regular VM where we have the same set of features for an Azure virtual machine. So Carpenter actually creates the independent VMs instead of creating a new virtual machine scale set VMSS. And note here, the size of this virtual machine is standard D2 LS V5. And this is important here. This is a D VM, not a B VM. However, in our demo, we wanted to create a B VM for burstable VMs. So what happened here is that within the node pool burstable, we have a constraint here saying that the SKU version should be greater than 
it's not greater or equal it was greater than v2 however as per today we don't have b v3 vms we have only b v1 and v2 so that does not satisfy this constraint so Carpenter will go to use another node pool definition and at that time it will find the default node pool which will be relying on the D family virtual machines. For that we see here D VMs instead of B VMs. And note also this is using not the D2 standard VMs but it's using the D2 LS which is cheaper than D2 simple VMs. So Carpenter is trying always to choose the cheaper VMs instead of the expensive ones. Great, so for now, if I stop this and if I retry again kube control get nodes, I would see six nodes in my cluster, three for the system and three nodes created by Carpenter. And if I try also to get the deployment by running kube control get deploy, I would see here that all my th more 1000 pods are deployed successfully into my AKS cluster. Great, now what about the scale down scenarios? So let's say for example here I want to scale down from 1000 to 0 replica for my Nginx deployment and then I'll go to watch for the VMs in my AKS cluster. So I run the command kubectl get nodes dash w. Let's give it a few seconds. So now the pods will be unscheduled or they will be deleted from these VMs. Then those VMs will become underutilized Carpenter will detect that state and it will go to try to remove these VMs. And here we can see clearly that the VMs created by Carpenter were deleted. For more videos about AKS, check out my YouTube channel.